listening to NABWIC, the National Association of Black Women in Construction blog talk radio show, founded to increase the national awareness of black women in the construction industry. NABWIC is the charge and takes the charge for black women to advocate for further opportunities to its members. Our mission as a core foundation is to strengthen the building blocks of new educational, entrepreneurial, professional, and social network connections. The vision of NABWIC is to build long-lasting strategic partnerships with first-rate organizations and individuals that will provide groundbreaking and innovative solutions for black women in construction and their respective communities. We invite you to call or text or email family, business associates, or friends and tell them that we are on the air right now. Or they can join us on the Internet by logging in to www.blogtalkradio.com slash N-A-B-W-I-C or by phone at 714-459-3918 and press 1 to join our conversation with questions or comments. Good morning. Welcome to another wonderful Wednesday here at NABWIC Talks. I am your host, Zakia Flagg from Flag Labor out of Union, New Jersey, offering manpower on demand to general contractors and builders. We have another amazing show for you today. We wrapped up last month uh, talking with NABWIC members all over the country as we did our NABWIC Talks month for just members in April. But I'm happy to say we have another NABWIC member joining us in the studio today, Ms. Audrey Cotton. She's going to uh, speak today with Odidra Williams, and they're going to chat about her journey. But before we do that, I'd like to introduce some of our podcast co-hosts, behind-the-scenes rock stars that are always here in the studio to keep this party going. Jackie Perry, our marketing chair and our hero here at NABWIC as far as marketing is, is concerned, owner of Data Architect IT Consulting Company. Ursula Odoms, a motivational speaker, owner of Ursula's History Shop, and Ursula has dedicated herself to making sure women's voices are heard. Next up, Gerald Barnes, our partner and consultant, and stru- consultant extraordinaire. Mr. Barnes has supported many business owners in achieving their goals and dreams. And Odidra Williams, she is a real estate development economic developer, and she's also going to have the conversation later on today with Ms. Audrey Cotton. But before we do that, before we bring them both into the studio, I have to introduce you guys to Ms. Ann. She is our leader. She is the powerhouse behind MCO Construction and the visionary founder of NABWIC. Anne's leadership and consistency has paved the way for countless women in the construction industry. Miss Anne, good morning. Good morning. Ann. Uh, good How morning, are you? good morning. Listen, Zakia, good morning, good morning, good morning. I always like to say, Zakia, if I were any better, you know, I <laughs> would be you, Ursula, Jackie, Odidra, and not Gerald, but but I would be all of the above. I am so excited, but then I'm always excited because we have really began to raise the bar in so very, very, very many ways that it just continues to encourage, inspire, and uplift our members, our partners, our sponsors, and especially the children who are watching us elevate this industry of construction. And I always like to remind our listeners that as the voice of the construction industry, our vision continues to be to build lasting strategic partnerships with first-rate organizations and individuals that will continue to provide groundbreaking and innovative solutions in the construction industry. And Zakia, one of the ways we do that is by hosting our billion dollar luncheon. And next week we will have one of the largest you know, at last month it was large facilities. We have four presenters. This month is knocking it out of the park. So on the eighth of May, twenty twenty four, in case you're listening to this in the future or in the past, we are having five not two, not three, not four, not even, 
yes. But five bring their billions of dollars in opportunities to our members. And so we want to encourage all of you to go to our website at navweek.org, but also remember to subscribe to our YouTube, YouTube channel. I'm really promoting that a lot because we are putting all of our marketing material and information on our YouTube channel. You know, I can go on and on and on and on, but I won't do that today because we have a very special guest uh, that we are, are waiting to hear her story. And I am inspired, if I've not said this to you in a while, Audrey, I am really honestly inspired by you because when we first met, you have always been a giver and a servant to this organization. And I'm not going to get into your bio, you, you know, the team will do that. But I really just want everybody to know that you have a servant's heart. And every time our leadership asks for somebody to do something, you raise your hand. And from my heart to all of the hearts inside of NABWIC and our leadership, we really want you to know how much we appreciate you, love you. Kia, let's get this party started. All right, all right, all right. There you have it from our leader, Miss Ann. And with that said, I am going to jump right into Audrey Cawthon's bio just to give you guys a little bit of background and history about her. She is a Navy veteran turned project manager, professional entrepreneur with a storied military career over two decades and an impressive educational journey, culminating with an MBA in project management. Audrey's transition into the uh, civilian sector has been nothing short of inspiring. Audrey co-founded Long Briar, I hope I pronounced that right, Logan Briar Landing Property Solutions, a South Carolina-based firm specializing in providing short-term co-op corporate housing solutions. As she discusses the operations in, behind her business, Audrey also shares insights into her company's exciting towards inciting pivots toward construction project management. The strategic shift aims to streamline organizational process and manage construction projects from intuition to completion, ensuring efficiency, timelessness, and budget adherence. Audrey's narrative is a compelling tale of transition, leadership, and adaption. From managing behind technical projects in the Navy to facilitating comfortable accommodations for traveling professionals and now moving toward overseeing construction projects, her journey amplifies resilience and strategic foresight. We are looking forward to hearing from Audrey. We're going to take a short, short break. I'd like to remind everybody, if you want to call in, please call in uh, to 714-459-3918. Again, that's 714-459-3918 if you'd like to call in and speak with Audrey. But right now we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, Audrey Audrey and Odija will join us in the studio, and they're going to have a conversation. We'll be right back. Detroit Voltage. We keep the lights on. We power Detroit. Master electrician, electrical contractor, minority owned, black owned, woman owned. Your safety and satisfaction is our main priority. Residential, commercial, federal. Safety, time, and expertise. Bonded and insured. Contact us. Detroit Voltage. 1-800-258-1352. Info at DetroitVoltage.com. www.DetroitVoltage.com. Good morning, good morning. This is Odidra, and I am so excited for another edition of Network Talks and super excited to be talking to our guest, Audrey. How are you today, Audrey? I'm doing good. Good morning, good morning. I am doing well. Great. Thank you so much for being on with us today. Zaki was able to read your bio, so you've had an extensive mm-hmm. background. And I know you and I have talked offline about some of the new things that you're doing so just congratulations. Thank you for your service to our country, first of all, and thank you for all the things that you're doing right now. So let's hop right in. So tell us a little bit about what's new for you. I know that you were doing um, construction management, but now you're hopping into real estate investing. So what are you doing right now? What excites you right now? So right now, I'm not actually doing any uh, construction management or construction project management yet. However, I did interview for a job um, 
had my first interview for like uh, two weeks ago, and then I had my second interview on Monday, and I got hired on, and I start work tomorrow, but not as a construction project manage, manager because I don't necessarily meet all the qualifications, but they're going to start me out um, in the administrative side of the construction um, industry. So I'm excited about that. There is opportunity for growth, um, and that's what inspired me, and that's why I accepted the position, because there is opportunity to grow uh, within that industry or that organization. Okay, well, congratulations on your new venture. That sounds exciting. Thank you. Thank you yeah, so I'm much. I'm sure you're well with that. So how have how has your military background how has that allowed you to transition into the, some of your work? I'm always really inspired to hear about when military veterans and people who are in the military how they're able to transfer their leadership experience and just their um, the things they've been through how they're able to transition transition that. So how has that helped mm-hmm. you? It has helped a lot um, because a lot of the things that we do in the military, um, of course, are not. You know, on the on the civilian side, we don't do a lot of what we do. Or on the civilian, I'm sorry, I can't. Um, we don't do a lot of what we do in the military on the civilian side, if that makes sense. Um, so it's actually been an easier transition in that aspect. Um, sometimes when I ask someone a question or I'm doing something, they're like, oh, you know, this is this this is good because, but for me it's normal, but on the outside it's something that the industry uh, industry of the corporation need or the civilian side needs. So in my head I'm thinking, okay, this is normal for me. You know, this is what I do. Um, but on the civilian side, it's something that is. I see that it's something that is needed. And I'm finding that more and more each day, everywhere I go, basically. Um, skills or experience, not just my leadership um, skills, but, you know, a military member's leadership skills and all the skills that we develop in the military is is definitely something that is needed out here. Um, and, and I'm intrigued or inspired by that because I had no idea how, you know, my transition from the military was going to be to the civilian sector. Um, I am still growing out here in the civilian world, so I just retired in 2021. So 2021, I retired. So I still consider myself, you know, still learning, still growing. And even if I didn't retire, I'm always the person that is, you know, always going to learn something. Um, I'm always willing to, you know, open my mind, have an open mindset for growth. So that's another, um, that's another thing that I'm always doing. I'm always looking for that next thing. I'm always looking for that next opportunity to grow. And if I can help organizations grow in that aspect as well, and we can merge the two, then, you know, I'm sold. <laughs> I love that. And you are definitely, like Miss Ann said, you're definitely helping the NABWIC organization to grow and continue to be prosperous. So tell us how you got into NABWIC and how long you've been a member. So I started following the association about, I'm going to say about two years ago, because I know I remember myself being behind a computer. Actually, it was more than two years ago because I was still in the military. Um, so I started researching because I was like, you know, I have to have something else. I have to do something outside. So I want to know. I didn't exactly know what I wanted to do at the time. Um, I started looking into real estate investing um, and wholesaling, and I was like, okay, well, I need to find the people who are already out there doing this stuff. Um, so I, for somehow, some way, I can't remember exactly how I came across NABWIC, but I found NABWIC online. And I just, you know, from there I started following in the background, um, in the background. So I've been following NABWIC for a couple of years. I didn't actually join the association until December of last year. Um, so when I got to Florida, I think I reached out to the Florida chapter. And I started attending meetings. That was back in February of 2023. So I attended meetings. And then I saw how, you know, the leadership of NABWIC you know, in the Northeast Florida chapter, I saw how hard they were working and trying to recruit people, and they needed people. I was like, well, you know, I have all this experience. I have all these skills. Let me get in here, you know, and help them because I see how hard they're working, you know, trying to, you know, get people into the association and help build this chapter down here. I was like, well, I have the skills. I have, you know, I I have the time, obviously, because I'm retired. Um, So let me just, you know, help them out, 
That's, I really do see how hard they were working to try to recruit people. Um, but I didn't join the association until December 2023, so it's been about almost five months since I've been a member. Okay, great. Well, thank you for your membership. And what has your experience been like so far? So if anyone's thinking of joining, what would you recommend for them? It's been amazing. Um, what I would recommend for them is to find out who the leadership is of their local chapter, or it, if not um, their local chapter, you know, there's the national chapter, and they can, you know, go online to org and, you know, find out exactly who and, you know, which chapters are, you know, available. Um, but I do recommend it because I, I, I love that there also is an opportunity for growth within this association. Um, and I'm willing to, you know, utilize my skills in order to help the organization grow. Um, I love that we are the voice of black women in construction because for so long, even in the military, <laughs> you know, our voices were a little, I'm going to say suppressed as black women, as black, you know, individuals. So I love how we're able to, and, and, and this Anne, oh, so amazing. I love how she gives us the opportunity to, you know, expand our voices to whereas, you know, if we were in another association or another organization or just even out here in the civilian world, you know, we don't necessarily have that voice. You know, it's limited. You know, we some may have it, but it's very, very limited. But within this association, you know, if there's something that you want to do uh, within the construction industry or, you know, you have the people. The, the people are in place to help you. And that's another thing that I love about this association. Because even with me, you know, I'm starting out in, into the construction industry. I feel the opportunity is there. I feel that the opportunity is there for growth. Now, this job opportunity came from someone that I met in that week. That's why, you know, you should join the association. This job opportunity that I start tomorrow came from someone in Navwick. So the networking is there. You just have to get out there and you know, network and, you know, get to know people. Get to, you know, you're going to like. I love everybody that I've met in this association. Everybody's just so warm. And I feel like I can be myself around the ladies here. I don't know. I just love it. I love it. I love what we stand for. I'm also amazed at the fact that we pray before every single meeting. Now, I was sold on that. And it's just how Ms. Ann, she's going to get us in check, whether it's indirectly or directly. And that's another thing that I love about this association. I love that our leader is so humble, approachable. I love that. To whereas, again, Anywhere else, I've never been anywhere else where I felt this comfortable. In the military, I, I, I've never been anywhere else that, you know, I felt this comfortable and where, to where I'm able to, you know, express myself freely. Wow, I love that. That's awesome. Thank you so much for that. So we are glad once again to be talking to Audrey Cawthorn, and we are NABWIC Talks. We're going to take a really brief commercial break, and then when we come back, we will continue to talk with Audrey and learn more about what she's up to. Again, this is NABWIC Talks, and I am your co-host, Odidra. Thank you for joining us. We are so excited to have you listening to NABWIC, the National Association of Black Women in Construction blog talk radio show. Please call, text, or email family, business associates, or friends and tell them that we are on the air right now. Or they can join us on the Internet by logging in to www.blogtalkradio.com slash NABWIC or by phone at 714-459-3918 and press 1 to join our conversation with questions or comments. Please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Don't forget to follow us by liking our page and post your questions or comments. And ABWIC's intent is 
to always go into the high schools and colleges to encourage our young black girls and women to enter into the construction industry and to take interest into the STEM programs that are offered. We encourage you to listen to this show or past shows on the Internet by logging in at www.blogtalkradio.com slash N-A-B-W-I-C. Thank you, and we're back. All right. Thank you so much. I always love those commercial breaks. <laughs> yeah, so, Audrey, thank you again for joining us. This is Odidra, your host, with um, our other studio host, and we're talking to Audrey Cawthorn. Audrey, could you tell us a little bit about the business that you started, Logan Breyer? Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, and ma'am. Also, so I, I, sorry, sorry. But uh, what mm-hmm. motivated you to start your business as well? So my um, business, so I started my business the same month, (laughs) the same month that I retired from the military. Within the same month, I started my business. Um, And what inspired me the most is I always felt like, you know, I I have this in me. I have something in me to where, you know, I want to do more in life. Um, uh, You know, my why. Now, I have a daughter. My daughter's 28, and I do have two grandkids. Um, One is nine and one is four. So they are my why. I want to build something, you know, for them. I want, you know, we always talk about legacy and generational wealth. Um, but I, I want to build something, you know, that they're going to have when I leave this earth. I'm from a huge family. My mom, my grandpa, I mean, my, I'm sorry, my grandparents had 12, 12 kids. <laughs> 12 kids. Um, and, and I'm from a small town called Jonesville, South Carolina. Not a whole lot of opportunities there. Not a whole lot of opportunities there. So when I was growing up, I was like, no, this can't be life. There's got to be more out there, especially, you know, I'm I'm looking at people on TV, you know, in their business suits, carrying in their briefcase. I was like, how can I get there? How can I get there? Because I know that I can do this. I have it within me. I feel it. And um, from there, I, I just thought it was so much more in life that I could do. Um, now, I'm going to go back a little bit. I know you're, you're asking how I started my business, but this all transpires and motivated me, um, you know, to start my business. So, again, from a small town in Jonesville, South Carolina, called Jonesville, South Carolina, sorry, um, pregnant at 14, had my daughter when I was 15. Um, again, she's 28, two grandchildren, all of that. And, again, I'm going to go back to saying, you know, there's more to life because I thought my life was over at 14. I, I, I literally cried. Um, so at uh, it was 1920, at the age of 20, I end up, ended up joining the military. Um, I joined in August of 2001. And we all know what happened in September of 2001. Guess where I was as a small little country girl at the age of 20? Um, I was in boot camp during September 11th, fearful, cried, like, oh, my God, scared, scared. I don't – ooh, I just, just bringing back memories. Um, so I was scared. I ended up getting getting over my fears. And, you know, I always have a faithful – back. I have a faithful background, faith, I believe in God. And so that's what I linked my, you know, trust in. I was like, okay, I'm going to trust this. I'm going to trust that, you know, everything is going to be okay. 20 years later, ended up retiring. So here we are today. Um, again, I, I, I retired back in 2021, started my business in the same month of August, and um, just wanted to do more, wanted to do more, wanted to leave a legacy. The whole reason for me joining the military was for my daughter. I was like, okay, you know, I want a better life. There's got to be more, you know, being from a small town in uh, uh, South Carolina. Um, and my Business is named after my grandkids. My granddaughter's name is Logan. My grandson's name is Landon. So I was like, you know, uh, I'm going to be creative. I'm going to try to, you know, use this and, you know, create something for them. Because it's not necessarily for me. It's for them. And that's one of the reasons why I'm like, okay, I'm going to pivot. I'm not stopping. I'm going to pivot. So now I can get into corporate rental, corporate leasing. How I found that was through a networking group. Again, I've been networking since I've been out of the military. Networking until, you know, it's become exhausting. Um, I'm still going to continue to network, but I think that 
I would offer this advice to anyone. Um, network not, network until you find, find your tribe and network with within your tribe. That's one of the things that I've learned, okay? I, I networked until I found my tribe, and then I started networking within my tribe because I don't know if, you know, a lot of people – I got burned out <laughs> from networking. Um, so corporate leasing, that's how I found I found training within this networking group, and the training was on corporate leasing. And then I ended up starting. It was the easiest thing for me to get into. Um, so before that, I started trying to wholesale. <laughs> so real estate, inv- I knew that I wanted to do real estate investing after all my research and all of that. I knew that, okay, yeah, real estate investing is for me. That's what I want to do after I retire. Um, so I initially started with wholesaling. Um, I ended up spending more money than I was making, which was nothing. I didn't make any money. So I hired a, um, a virtual assistant and everything. It was just too much. It was just too much. I was up late at night and I was like, you know, this is, this does, this, it just doesn't feel right. So I knew if it doesn't feel right, then it's probably not right. Um, so then again, I went into corporate leasing through this and, um, Again, developing an interest for corporate leasing where I partnered with apartment communities in subleasing their units to traveling professionals. Um, about 90% of my guests were medical professionals. Um, so I did that for about two years. Things started to change, and we just felt that it wasn't the right thing for our business anymore. So actually, I just closed down my um, second short-term rental March 31st. So I'm still new in this um, pivoting era. Um, over into construction project management, but it is still like it's on time because March 31st was about almost a month ago, and I already have a job in the construction industry, less than a month. Um, so that's how you know everything transpired um, and what motivated me to start my business and why I'm going to keep going in this industry. Wow, I love that. I love that. It's so powerful. And I love what you said to network until you find your tribe and then network within that tribe. I think that is mm-hmm. amazing advice for any um, busy professional or people who are starting their career. And, you know, how do I get involved? Well, you have to get involved by networking and letting people know who you are. But then, like you said, it can be exhausting if you're going mm-hmm. in a thousand different directions. So if you're able to kind of key in on what you want to do and then find that tribe and then talk to the people there. And I think that's what I love so much about network as well is that there's so many women. We have men, obviously, too, because Gerald's on. Um, But, you know, we have so many people who do so many different amazing things. So Mm -hmm. you just never know someone's story, just like what you were sharing about your story. You know, it's just, it's powerful. You said that at 14, you found yourself pregnant and then, you know, I'm sure that you just had a myriad of emotions, but now on the other side of that, you're naming your company after your grandkids and you're leaving the legacy for (laughs) them. And so you've empowered and you can, you know, be an inspiration for other young women who may be in that same as that situation. Because as women, we know that we can get pregnant. <laughs> so, you know, it's, just, it's it's a struggle to, to try to find your place in this world. And so we really appreciate that you are doing that and have done so great at that. So would love to know on a personal level, what are some books that you're reading and something that, or it could just be one book, um, that's really inspired you and that you feel like we should, we should tap into? Well, I don't have any books that I'm reading right now. I did order the uh, Power Moves book by Sarah Jakes Roberts, who is my um, – well, I actually just joined their church last Wednesday. I think it was last Wednesday um, after going – or doing the e-church for about two years. Um, so I'm, I can't wait to get her book because I, I feel that she is so inspiring and so powerful. Um, one of the things that she said, because I listened to her, I have to put her on repeat. <laughs> I have to put her on repeat. Um, One of the things that she said was, you know, people always tell her that she's powerful and she's, you know, this or she, you know. But she said, I can't remember, and I don't want to misquote, but the power comes from being obedient. And it was something else that she said. So, again, she is just phenomenal human being. She's a phenomenal human being. And um, the book that I – I can't wait to get her book 
power moves because I know that my life will probably change again after reading that book. Um, I'm going to more than likely make a post about, you know, what I've learned from that book, and um, I can't wait to share. I can't wait to share with my NAPWIC family. I do consider NAPWIC as family, by the way. Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I do want to open it up if any of the co-hosts have any questions as well. Um, and, Audrey, you are just all over the place. I love that about you. I mm-hmm. met you in Charlotte at a um, mm-hmm. at the Charlotte Build Expo, and you were telling me that you were from the South Florida. Is it North Florida? Which which Florida chapter are you mm-hmm. in? North, or, north. or South? Mm-hmm. North, okay. North so you were telling Jacksonville. Me, Northeast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you're from the Northeast chapter. I'm like, wow, that's so cool that you came here for this. And then um, we were talking a couple of weeks ago, and you said you had come to Atlanta to go on a real estate tour for someone who I follow, yes. Clive, Clive Davis. Yes. So you, you yes. when it comes to going after what you want, you don't stop. You are here. You are there. Mm-hmm. How do you do it? How do you manage? Do you just so? Do you just look at different events that you want to go to and just say, okay, I'm going to go? How? What's that process like for you? So, I feel like Clyde Davis. Um, absolutely love him. He's another approachable, humble human being. Um, so he, I like him. I don't necessarily know, or I haven't worked with him yet, but I, I from his spirit, I, I, I feel it. And um, so I know him. Uh, I don't follow, I do follow, a, I'm going to say I do follow a lot of people. So I'm getting to still, you know, know, know people in the multifamily industry. I do have another lady that I'm working with who's my general partner. Oh, also, I'm sorry, I didn't tell everybody this, but I am a multifamily um, investor. Um, picked up my first deal last year, and we're getting ready to close on our second deal, actually, this, is this month. Still new to that industry. I'm a passive investor or a limited partner, so I don't have, you know, much I don't have much knowledge on, you know, most of because I'm still new to the industry. Um, so I found I feel like I found my tribe. So again, I'm networking within that tribe. Now, if someone else or something else come along that I'm interested in, I'm going to pretty much networking in that in, I'm sorry, network in that industry. But right now I feel like I found my tribe. And um, again, with the multifamily industry, it, it feels that tour felt like, you know, everybody on that tour was my family. And that's how I like to be made feel. I mean, I like to, you know, feel. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I love that. And again, I love your spirit. Of, I love your spirit of just going and, you know, just engaging people and um learning and growing. So I love that. Do we have any questions from any of the other co hosts? I do. This is Jackie Perry and I would be remiss if I did not come on I may not necessarily have a question but just a comment. I just wanna uh say that Audrey, she is a member of the local chapter in northeast Florida down in Jacksonville and um that's my chapter as well mm-hmm. and so we are comrades comrades yeah. in the <laughs> in the mission so uh Audrey she's very very active in our local chapter she's an invaluable member there she's known for her participatory spirit as we've already said and then that mm-hmm. passion for making a difference but I just wanted to say to you Audrey with all of your experience, you know, the military, your uh, educational training, the entrepreneurial ventures you've already started, I just want to say how much I admire your courage in being ready to pivot and acquire new skills, how you're channeling your interests into the construction sector. And now with embracing the new role, you start your new uh, job on tomorrow, that promises yeah enhance your expertise even further Mm -hmm. and we're confident that that endeavor will also lead to the birth of another entrepreneurial uh, Mm -hmm. venture that's driven by your relentless effort and dedication so i just wanted to say on behalf of our president miss diane king flowers and all the members of the northeast uh, chapter we want to thank you for what you've already done to build up our chapter to help us grow to 
uh, show all that interest and passion, which is very contagious. So we've got other people, you know, that are wanting to be involved as a result. But I'm not going to take up, mm-hmm. up, up a lot of time, but I just wanted to come on and just let you know how valued and how much we appreciate you. And thank you for everything that you do. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Jackie. Yes, thank you. Are are there any other questions or comments from the co-host today? Okay, well, if not, Audrey Cawthon, thank you so much for being our guest today. Are there any parting words that you would like to leave us with, any words of encouragement or inspiration that you want to share with us? Um, I know, so alignment, okay, and being intentional about who you align yourself with or what you align yourself with. I think that is extremely important, um, especially like for the younger, younger people. Find people that fit your future, where you want to go, and then start aligning yourself and being intentional about aligning yourself with the right people or the people that are in the industry, wherever you want to go. Um, and I always like to, you know, talk to the younger crew and motivate them and inspire them. Um, and one of the things, one of the events that came up here in the Northeast Florida chapter was the Construction Career Days, where we got to mentor young adults, individuals. And um, a lot of them already knew what they wanted to do, and it wasn't construction. <laughs> and a lot of them did not know what they wanted to do. So one of the things that I told them was see yourself 20 years from now. And then for the older crew, I guess maybe 5, 10, what you want to be or where you want to go, you know, 10, 5, 10 years. But the, for the younger individuals, see who you want to be, your, see your higher self, not anyone else, but your higher self 20 years from now, and then work like, you know what, to get there. So that's one of the things that I wanted. To, I don't know if there are any younger people on the line, but that's one of the things that I would always tell, you know, the younger crew whenever I'm around them and mentoring them that they have to, you know, see themselves in a higher, see their higher selves today. I mean, you're going to have your fun now and you're going to have your friends, but you also have to think ahead too. You know, live your life for today, yes, but also think where it is that you want to go 20 years or be 20 years from now. I love it. I love that. I love all that. You've dropped so many inspirational gems today, and we really appreciate you uh, networking until you find your tribe and then network within that tribe. See where it is that you want to be. Be fearless in your attempt and what you want to do and go after that. Don't be afraid to travel and get out there. Um, So thank you so much for that. We appreciate you. We appreciate your leadership in NAVWIC. We appreciate who you are and how you show up in the world. Again, this is NABWIC Talks, and this is Odidra. We've been talking to Audrey Carlson, and we're just super excited that she was able to join us today. As always, please go to org to find out more about NABWIC and then join us uh, next Wednesday again with another episode of NABWIC Talks, and then also join us for our billion-dollar luncheon on next Wednesday as well. You can go to org to find out about that and sign up or Search us on Eventbrite, NABWIC, N-A-B-W-I-C, on um, on Eventbrite, and you can sign up for the Billion Dollar Luncheon next week. Thank you again. This is Odidra. We have with us Zakia, uh, Ms. Jackie Perry, Ursula, Ms. Ann McNeil, and also Jared Barnes in the studio with us. And as always, we'll be back every Wednesday at 8.30 a.m. with another episode of NABWIC Talks. Thank you so much. This concludes our show. Thank you for listening to NABWIC, the National Association of Black Women in Construction. For more information about NABWIC and our membership, please visit us on the web at www.nabwic.org. We are the voice of black women in construction. Have a great and prosperous day.